Welcome to the study of projectile motion. In our second video here, we're going to be taking a look at uh, a projectile fired at an angle. In our last video, we looked at a projectile fired horizontally. In this one, we'll look at it fired at an angle. We're going to start off by watching a video which answers the uh, age-old question. Um, if an aborigine in the jungle was shooting a monkey from a tree with a dart gun and the monkey lets go of the branch as shown in this picture at the same time as the um, the dart comes out the end of the gun would the aborigine have to adjust for the path of the dart in other words would the aborigine have to aim higher than the monkey lower than the monkey or just aim at the monkey regardless um, you would hit the monkey every time. This uh, next video addresses that and it's a neat uh, demonstration uh, done at MIT. What may not have been clear during the video was that they aimed their golf ball gun right exactly at the monkey. The idea, of course, is that the golf ball and the monkey falls at the same rate. And here's the important condition. As long as the projectile has enough horizontal velocity to reach that far out where the monkey is falling, the projectile will always hit the falling object. Pretty neat demonstration. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, this time, our projectile is going to start fired at an angle. So we'll label that VI, initial velocity. Um, you may recall, as with any object that we dealt with at an angle, um, what we did was we took that vector and broke it into its two components. So in the study of projectile motion, what we do is we take that initial velocity and we break it into its initial um, horizontal component, the x component, and its initial vertical component, the y component. And our projectile is fired at an angle theta above the horizontal. Well, using trig, how would we calculate these uh, individual components? Well, you can see that the VIX is adjacent to the angle that if we were to draw the right triangle made by this diagram, that VI would be the hypotenuse. So the trig function that relates VIX, theta, and VI is cosine. So doing the algebra, VIX would be VI times the cosine of theta. Similarly, if we draw our parallelogram, VIY would be opposite the angle theta, VI the hypotenuse. So the trig function that relates VIY, VI itself, and theta is sine. Solving for VIY, VIY is VI 
sine theta. So that's how we would calculate those two components. A projectile travels in a parabolic path, goes up, comes down, and then returns to the surface or the level from which it was fired. And so we have some other important variables in here as well. Here, once again, is our dy, our height. And, of course, this value from where the projectile started horizontally out to where it finishes would be dx. And we, of course, know this as the range of the projectile. We're now going to go back to our two sets of motions and our two sets of equations and <clears throat> identify uh, the various equations and variables that apply for each. If we analyze this event horizontally, we once again note that that horizontal velocity um, that it, it starts out with, that dix component remains constant. Um, again, same as what we learned in horizontal projectile. Um, so this object travels sideways under conditions of constant velocity. Once again, uh, we only have one equation under which those conditions exist, and that would be V equals D over T. So once again, making a horizontal projectile motion specific, we would say Vx equals dx over t. But in this case, how do we calculate that constant horizontal velocity given that this is fired at an angle? Um, we would say uh, that it would be equal to vi cosine theta. So you can either calculate that component up front or you can substitute it directly into this equation as pictured here. Okay. All right, we also have vertical motion taking place at the same time as our horizontal motion. Once again, these two motions are independent of each other. The only thing they share is that they have time in common. They both take place in the same amount of time. But just like in our last study of a projectile fired horizontally, a projectile fired at an angle the vertical motion is under conditions of constant acceleration due to gravity. This acceleration due to gravity is what causes the projectile to rise uh, with a deceleration and then fall with a constant acceleration. That, and that acceleration slowing the projectile down upward is the same as the acceleration that speeds it up downward. Okay. So we start out with the same equation we used before, d equals vit plus one-half at squared. Now we make it uh, projectile motion vertical specific. So dy equals viyt plus one-half gt squared. Okay, And now we have some other things to take in consideration. So dy equals, well, that initial velocity component vertically we just talked about a moment ago would be calculated by vi sine theta. Okay, and then we multiply by the t there. And the other thing to take into consideration is that in this problem we have conflicting directions. That initial uh, component vertically of our velocity is directed upward while the acceleration due to gravity is always directed downward. What that does is it gives our g value a negative sign which gives that entire quantity at the end of our equation a negative value. So we could say minus one-half gt squared. Okay. So there you have it. There, Here is the discussion on a projectile fired at an angle, and um, 
all the equations that go into the analysis of that projectile fired at an angle. 